Hey everyone, Kevin here. I have updates for you regarding the stimulus check, stimulus package, the portal, the PPP, the EITL. So let's jump right into those. Today, the market is down about 2% and it's 420. Let's go. Let's start with the stimulus checks. If you got a notification or you for some reason are expecting your check to be mailed to you, but your address has since changed. That is, you have a different address now from when you filed your tax return. Make sure you go to USP gov and file another change of address form. I think it's a couple bucks to uh, file that, but at least then the United States Postal Service can forward your check to the correct location. Very important, usps.gov or just Google change of address form. You can do it right through the official government website. Also, I'm surprised by this, but there are still rumors going around that the stimulus check might reduce your future tax refund. Those rumors are false. There is no indication anywhere that the stimulus check is owed back, that it's taxable. I haven't seen it at the tax foundation, any publication, the IRS, nobody says it's taxable. And there's also no indication that your future refunds would be reduced if you got your stimulus check. Which in my last video, I mentioned that if you were overpaid, that is you got more of a stimulus check or you got a stimulus check and you shouldn't have gotten one. I had probably seven dozen comments of folks going, does that mean the person with the $8 million stimulus check is going to get it too. That was a banking error at an ATM. They didn't actually get an $8 million stimulus check. But yeah, I mean, if, if you got a check for Walter Smith and your name is Kevin David, <laughs> that check isn't meant for you. You're not supposed to deposit that money. So that's not your money. But let's say I don't qualify for a stimulus check because maybe somebody claimed me as a dependent, but I got a stimulus check. From what research we have, you can keep that money. Now, for those of you receiving social security benefits, supplemental security income, SSI, disability income, VA benefits, technically you do not have to input your information on the non-filers portal. However, if you have a child that qualifies for the $500 tax credit that's under 17 years old, it's highly recommended that you do use the non-filers portal at irs.gov EIP. Put your information in under the non-filers portal with your children's information and your direct deposit information, and that way you could secure that $500 credit. By the way, for everybody, it's important if you have not used the portals yet at irs.gov slash EIP, you do so before Thursday, April 24th. So ideally do it on the 23rd or before if you can get the system to work. We'll talk about error messages in just a moment. But if you do go through the portal before Thursday, you will be included in the next wave. Now, if you do not have children, for example, you're a veteran, you're receiving veterans benefits automatically deposited and you don't have children and you don't file a tax return. No, you don't have to do anything. You should receive your stimulus check if you're eligible where you receive your veteran benefits. However, the IRS has said if you are a veteran automatically receiving deposits, you're still encouraged to use the non-filers portal to update your information. And if you're on SSI or SSDI or you're receiving retirement benefits, you can use the non-filers portal to update your information, like your direct deposit information or your address. So if you have not used that portal, you are welcome to use that portal. It's not going to delay you receiving your stimulus check. If anything, it will clarify where you should receive your stimulus check. But again, if you don't have children and you're already receiving direct deposits, you probably don't have to do anything. In terms of timing, those of you receiving SSI, Supplemental Security Income, you should expect to receive your deposit within the first two weeks of May. That's the first half of May. If you receive a Social Security Disability Insurance payments or you're on Social Security Retirement, you should expect expect your direct deposit by the end of April, so earlier than SSI recipients. The same actually goes for railroad retirement benefits also. You should see that by the end of April. By the way, if you have not yet heard, yes, it does look like if you are a regular a filer, that is you regularly file your tax returns and you're okay getting the paper check, they might be delaying those paper checks. That is, that's at least what the Treasury Secretary said yesterday on an interview with CNN. <laughs> hey, we haven't sent any checks yet, even though we all thought they were gonna start sending checks last week because they want us to use the online portal at irs.gov slash EIP. Now for everybody else, yes, there is a get my payment portal, which just to clarify, if you are receiving veteran benefits, you're on SSI, SSDI, or you receive uh, retirement benefits, the get my payment portal might not work for you. 
That's normal, that's expected, and that's known right now because you're receiving payments through these other agencies. So you could use the non-filers portal, that works, but otherwise you're not gonna be using the Get My Payment portal. The Get My Payment portal is for everyone else. And if you are using the Get My Payment portal and you're having issues with the Get My Payment portal, here are a few updates for you. First of all, we know there's a known bug right now that if you are inputting zero for refund or amount paid, you're probably not going to be able to get your status Status. I believe, and this is just a rumor right now, but I believe also, if you've checked that box, apply my refund to future tax payments, I believe that also qualifies as zero, which might lead you into that same bug of not being able to get your status. The best recommendation there is check the portal uh, every 25 or so hours. You don't wanna check it too often within 24 hours because you might get locked out. And I've heard some folks have been checking it every 20 hours and they perpetually stay locked out of the portal. So purposefully kinda stretch your timiness <laughs> with the portal. But apparently even bug fixes are only manually changed in the IRS portal and sort of updated in the server every 24 hours. So there's no difference if you check once a day or twice a day, it should have the same exact information. At least that's what the IRS says. Uh, also, some basic issues. By the way, if, if you, this is happening a lot. A lot of folks are putting their information in and uh, they're getting an error message that their information can't be pulled up. What I've been recommending to folks who've been posting in my Discord channel or people who are members of my programs where we talk in our live streams is, and I'm gonna tell you too, is go get your actual tax returns. Now, a lot of us, we have our tax returns buried in a box somewhere, but get them. Pull them out and get that IRS form 1040 because you never know how H&R Block shortened your address or how your CPA made a typo or whatever. Get the 1040 and actually look at your exact mailing address. And when it asks you for your adjusted gross income, look at the exact number. A lot of CPAs are rounding a dollar here, a dollar there. Oh, that's messing folks up. A lot of folks will look at their address and it'll say something like CT instead of court. Or here's a good one that I heard. Somebody lives on the street, St. Paul's Drive. And the way the sign shows it is S-A-I-N-T space Paul's with an S and then DR for drive. But the way the accountant filled out the form was ST Paul's and then drive written out. So they shortened the word saint, but lengthened the word Paul's. It's like, ah, this is why. When you get your, your 1040, you actually get your tax return and you look at it, it's like, ah, that might answer your question as to why you can't get into the portal. The IRS portal, it's not forgiving. It's literally like a spreadsheet. If it says, if it's one letter off, one digit off, and it doesn't perfectly match, you're not getting in through the wall. Now, some of you are mentioning that you have an overseas address or you used an overseas address on uh, your tax returns. This is also a known issue right now because those are difficult addresses to format into the US addresses. You can try. A lot of the longer addresses are sort of getting collapsed into the main fields, but you wanna also be careful because if you try it too often, you get locked out, so it's like a catch-22. Now, when it comes to your actual direct deposit information, I really just implore you to match your account name to the actual person requesting the stimulus check just to minimize the odds of any issues. For example, last week I said, if you are somebody who filed married filing jointly, that is you and a spouse filed, but then you're trying to put direct deposit information in for you only, and it's not a joint account, yeah, it might go through. Your bank might process it, but they might also reject it, especially with how fussy this portal is. So if, if you're filing jointly, just to be safe, put a joint account in. And I know I'm gonna get a million comments of people like, well, my bank let it through, well, my bank went, great, perfect. We're just talking worst case scenario here, trying to minimize the odds. Here's another example of this. Let's say your name is Kevin William David and your tax return says Kevin William David, but your bank account says Kevin David. And there are five other Kevin Davids at your routing number that also have bank accounts that are listed as Kevin and David. And you don't have the middle name in there. Yeah, you know what? 90% chance it's going to go through. But if it doesn't match exactly, it is possible it won't. So I recommend, hey, you know what? 
use an account where your name matches perfectly to maximize your chance of getting it as fast as possible. Now, my guess is that's only going to solve a few of the issues. More commonly, I think routing numbers and bank account numbers are accidentally being typoed. So remember when you put the information in, take a break, get a cup of coffee and come back to verify you wrote the information correctly and then submit it. Now, a big reason, by the way, a lot of us might be seeing status not available is potentially because you're either not eligible, like you made too much money, or you potentially just filed your 2018 or 19 tax return, or maybe you didn't file your 2018 or 19 tax return, and it just hasn't been processed yet. A lot of folks are e-filing right now, and you can actually use an IRS tool called um, IRS2Go. It's an app where uh, you can download it on your phone, I think Android, Apple, and so on. And uh, on this app, you can actually track the status of your tax refund and the processing of your tax return. If you've just filed your 2019 tax return within like the last week or two, well, don't be surprised that you can't use the Get My Payment portal yet because your tax return probably has not been processed yet. So in an interesting way, when we started this process, you know, a month ago, back then the answer to how do I get my deposit in the fastest way possible was file your 2019 tax return. Well, now that's sort of shifted to if you filed your 2018 tax return, great, use that information. If you just filed your 2019 tax return, yeah, that's gonna be faster than getting a paper check. That is, you file your 2019 tax return with your direct deposit information and accurate name and address and everything's been, you know, triple checked. But now you have to wait three weeks for that 2019 tax return to process and that's with e-filing. If you're paper filing, Good luck. Now look, I just wanna be super, super clear. The portal sucks, don't get me wrong. I'm just hoping you can get a little bit of information from this video that's gonna potentially help you solve the problem and trick that portal into making it work for you. But again, check out that app they have, IRS2Go. And yeah, I realize they have like a three-star review on the app store, but you know what? It is the IRS after all. So yeah, you know, three is like a five, okay? <laughs> Now, some folks have asked, what if you were claimed as a dependent in 2018 and then you filed your 2019 tax return and you were not claimed as a dependent? Great, but you have to wait for those three weeks to go by for your tax return to be processed. Then once it's processed, then you could log in and actually check to see your get my payment status for your stimulus check, which by the way, I've actually had some folks in that Discord chat link down below say that they're a non-filer and they use the IRS to go app to track the status of their payment just by inputting $1 into the tax return slot. So that might be another tool or trick for you to try to use. A few other important notes here. Number one, if you have gotten a call from the Social Security Administration suspending your social security number, asking you to please immediately call, don't. It's probably a scam. The Social Security Administration does not call you asking you for your personal information and they don't just send you a quick message going, we suspended your social, call us. I've even had that call come through. And initially, like I get the feeling, like you see this, it's like, what? My, my Social Security number has been locked? What, my PayPal's been frozen? What, my bank account's been locked? And we get so like instantly panicked that it's like, oh my gosh, I need to call and fix this right away. But really think, just take a moment, take a step back and go, wait a minute, is this a scam? And the answer is it probably is. There are also now scam text messages coming out saying you could get stimulus check bonuses and you can go shopping and get free stuff at Costco or other retailers like Target. If you just click this link, don't click the link. Do not click funky looking links that you get from random numbers in your text messages, really bad. Simply clicking the link is enough for people to get a gateway into a lot of our devices. All right, now we're gonna get to EIDL PPP, but I do have a note here on unemployment. Somebody wrote that they work part-time at an essential facility. They were sent home by management because they were sick with symptoms. Uh, it's been two weeks and they're still waiting for test results. Would I qualify for hours lost? I would say, A, you sound like a perfect candidate to be claiming paid leave here because one of the first stimulus packages that passed covers that. But yeah, folks, when in doubt, apply. If you're in doubt and your income has gone down and you're affected or you're not working or you're partially unemployed or you're a 1099 contractor and your income's gone down, you're self-employed, your income's gone down, 
apply for unemployment with your state. You always apply through your state. There is no federal portal for applying for unemployment. So go to your state's unemployment website, realize that long lines, they are inundated. All right, now EIDL PPP, just sort of a quick update here on the new interim bill that has verbally been approved. Today's the day that we're expecting to actually see the paper in the Senate get voted on. Now, I believe they're doing a telephone vote, so we'll see, I'll report updates as soon as I have them, but this is something to stay tuned to, because as soon as that passes, the EIDL might start accepting more disaster relief applications for grants. That's that free $1,000 per employee if you have like a small business or side hustle, so stay tuned for that. Also, a lot of banks are now accepting applications subject to additional funding, which means don't wait if you're a small business to apply for the PPP. Instead, apply for the PPP now. So that way you get your place in line. <laughs> don't wait for that bill to pass and everybody else to rush in. And last but not least, if you have not yet signed up for life insurance during this crazy time, what are you doing? It doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are, go to the link down below. It takes you five minutes to do from your phone. You get an instant quote. You could instantly sign up for life insurance. Keep in mind, if you're like 20 years old, it's dirt cheap to get life insurance. It does scale by age, obviously, but do consider getting that, protect yourself, your family. Also, get your two free stocks with Weeble. When you deposit just $100, you'll get up to $1,400 in free stocks. It is a little bit of a lottery though, so you might get less, but at least you're left with a really good stock trading platform. And of course, join me in my amazing real estate programs linked down below and my programs on money. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.